Hey guys, so a friend of mine's purchased this CNC lathe from China and uh, we found that the documentation for it's not the best so he's asked for a bit of help in getting the machine up and running. Um, we've brought it out here to my workshop so I could spend some time getting to know the machine and um, I've also written a post processor for Fusion 360. Uh, this is just going to be a quick uh, getting started series of videos on the GSK 928TD CNC lathe controller from China. So first things first, we want to power up the machine. Make sure the e-stop is off. Now you'll see this GSK splash screen. Uh, just pressing any button on the control panel will get you to the main screen. So when you first power it up, you'll be on the uh, list of programs. Um, basically, we want to move over to the jog screen. And this is where we'll set up uh, your machine coordinate system, your workpiece coordinate system, and the program zero point. Uh, now the machine coordinate system is basically the position of the machine when it hits its limit switches in both the X and the Z axis. Uh, and that's the foundation for all of the other coordinate systems for the machine. So first thing we want to do with the machine is press the machine zero Z button. And once the machine moves over to its limit switches, you'll see that it brings up a little blue uh, cross here, here to say that the machine's been zeroed in the z-axis. And then we want to hit the X machine zero button as well. Now once that's been completed, we want to jog the machine over to a safe position. Um, somewhere that you can do a tool change without crashing into the part or the tailstock. And we do that by using the MPG wheel, the manual pulse generator. So I like to sit the machine somewhere around minus 150Z, somewhere there, and about minus 50 in X. We can see that that's just a, a safe position for the tool change. And so what we're going to do next is hit the input button, zero. It'll say set program zero, enter. And now we've got two green icons here to say that we've set the program zero point. So next thing that we want to do is to jog the machine over to the workpiece and set up the workpiece coordinate system. There's a few different ways to do this step. The way I like to do it is to jog tool number one right up to the part and uh, take a face cut so you can true up that face surface and we set our workpiece coordinate system zero point uh, on the end of that face. So we're going to start the spindle. Just get you over here for a better look. So we just jog the tool up until it touches that face. There it is. Stop the spindle. So to set the Z-axis uh, work coordinate system zero point, we're gonna press input, Z, zero, enter. Now you'll see that the coordinates here have changed to Z, zero. And we can jog the tool away back to a safe position. You can either do that with the MPG or just press the program zero buttons. Next thing we need to do is to set up the tool offsets. Uh, if you haven't set up the machine before, uh, each tool that you've got in the turret, you need to specify its X and Z offsets. Um, there's a few different ways to do this. The way I like to do it is to touch off the end of the part with tool one and we say that that's the, the zero Z offset for that tool. And then we take a skim test cut on the diameter of the part. Uh, we measure that diameter and put that into the offsets table to, say the, to specify the X offset for that tool. And then we just repeat that for each tool. So we start the spindle. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna say spindle speed 1000 by S 1000, enter. 
over to the MPG mode. Jog over to the part. So we just take a light cut on the diameter of the part. And then we move the tool away, making sure we don't move the x-axis, only the z. Stop the spindle. And we take a measurement. For this part that I'm making, uh, the dimensions are not that critical, so I'm just going to use uh, Mijitoyo vernier, digital vernier. So we measured that at 92.63 millimeters. Uh, to enter the tool offset, we're going to press I to set the X offset. Enter the diameter that we measured, 92.63 millimeters. Enter. Offset number 01, because we've, we're using tool one. Enter, so that's stored the offset. Now if we look over on the offsets table here, uh, you can see that we now have an X offset in the table. Uh, tool number one, I don't change the Z offset. That's the way I do it. I use the workpiece coordinate system to set the Z position. Tool one's Z offset doesn't change, but we do need to set both the X and the Z offsets for the rest of the tools. Uh, kind of use the tool one as a master tool. So now we're going to change to tool 2, T0202, enter, and repeat the process, but this time we're going to jog up and either use a shim against the face of the part, uh, something like a, a tally ho cigarette paper or um, a feeler gauge or a gauge block or something like that to, uh, to touch off the end of the part. Um, in this case, we can just actually bring the tool up until it just touches the part. And that, that's fine for the accuracy of what we're making here. Again, for tool four, we jog up, run the spindle, take a test cut, measure that, enter the tool offset, and then jog up to the end of the part, touch the face, and enter the Z offset. So let's do that. The measurement was 92.32, so I, 92.32, enter, offset number 4 for tool 4, enter, done. So now we start the spindle to do the Z axis, jog up to the end of the part. Just touch the end of the part, stop the spindle, and we enter K for the Z-axis, zero, enter, offset number four, enter. Now we've got a Z0 position or offset for that tool as well. Uh, we jump back over to the offsets table. Now we can see we've got offsets in X for tool number one, no offset for Z for tool number one. Uh, I, I skipped tools two and three because they're not actually in the turret at the moment. And tool number four has both an X and a Z offset. So once we've got a part program from, from Fusion 360 or whatever you use on the computer uh, onto a USB stick, uh, stick the USB stick in the control. And now this is one of the quirks about these Chinese controls is uh, things don't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, for things like this. So to get the USB file from the stick onto the control, we press the axis change button and then U for USB. Uh, in this case, our part is number 88. 
So we use the plus button to select that file and press enter. And now it's going to ask, do we want to replace the program? Press one for yes. Once that's done, we can hit escape and we'll see now that we've got part number 88 here. So running the part program, uh, we want to input 88, that's our program, enter. Uh, it shows us the G code here. And now if we go over to auto screen, this is where we run the G code. Just doing a quick sanity check to make sure our offsets make sense. So I'm moving the tool up to the end of the part just to make sure it's approximately zero and just checking that the diameter makes sense as well. All right, that all looks good. So I'll take the tool back to a safe position. Uh, everything looks reasonable. You're ready to run the program. Back to auto mode. And cycle start. Now this isn't gonna be the best machining footage. Uh, I need to keep the door pretty much shut to stop coolant going everywhere, but uh, yeah, at least you'll get an idea of what's going on. Generally a good idea to hover your finger over the cycle pause button just in case something doesn't look right. You can always pause the program and uh, double check. I should mention that it's always a good idea to have your rapid override turned down to the minimum. So in this case, 25% for this machine. Um, that just stops the machine from uh, rapiding off at a fast pace unexpectedly. So you can sort of keep an eye on things and hit cycle pause if things aren't going to plan. So for this part, it's uh, quite simple. What we're doing is a couple of facing passes uh, we're taking about three millimeters off the face of the part just because it is a, a cast aluminium it's pretty rough it's got some voids and pits um, so we're just going to take a little bit extra off the face to try and clean that up uh, the the final results not too critical um, so it doesn't matter if we've got some voids and pits left over on the part uh, it's going to then once it's done the facing cut it's going to then uh, rough out the overall shape and then do a finishing pass
just reposition the coolant. It's uh, slowing down because most of the coolant's now on the floor. That's one of the biggest problems with these uh, budget-friendly machines out of China, is uh, you can never stop the coolant leaks. All right, that's it, part's done. So for this part, we would now take it out of the chuck, flip it around, uh, reset our Z0 point, and run the second operation program to finish the part. I hope this helps. Uh, I know there's quite a few of these GSK CNC lathes getting around. Um, not much documentation on them, so we've put this video together to uh, try and help get you up and running. Thanks for watching.